technical talk. So we had a technical talk and non-technical talk. That's a technical talk again, and this one includes some live demo and some live hacking action. Oh, this is all stuff we love, stuff we've never seen before. So those of you, I'm pretty sure most of you who deal with security will be aware of the company called Port Swinger and a product called Burp Suite, because this is probably one of the most popular uh, commercial penetration testing tool. Obviously, first talk talk about OWASP Zap, which is a popular own free uh, penetration testing tool. And Port Swinger is now called Burp. Obviously, Gareth's been working at uh, Port Swinger. Obviously, he is a um, JavaScript expert and. Uh, He's created quite a few JavaScript related frameworks and tools, tools which are available on the web as well, so check out some of his projects. But now let's just get on with the next talk and uh, Gareth, there you go, tell you something. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Sam for inviting me. Um, and oh, welcome to JSON Hijack for the modern web. In this talk, I will show you how to steal JSON things across domain using new browser features. I'll also bypass CSP and also talk about the history of JSON and It's a little bit about me. Um, I work for Port Swigger, as uh, Sam mentioned. So I work for Port Swigger, as uh, Sam mentioned. It's an awesome company to work for. Um, we've got awesome people there, and the, the, group. the work is very challenging and rewarding. Now, I love hacking JavaScript. This little beauty, sorry, this little beauty um, uses destructuring assignments and the let keyword with labels um, and only works on edge. So I just love finding JavaScript out. I love breaking browsers, I love breaking same origin policy, JavaScript, HTML, etc. And if you follow me on Twitter, I generally tweet about JavaScript and post a lot. That's it. So, uh, brief history of JavaScript, uh, JSON hijacking. So we have the array constructor attack. That works by overwriting the array constructor. So if you have an array literal, what used to happen was the, you, you, you create a new array, and the actual array constructor in JavaScript would be called. But because we've overwritten this with our own custom function, as you can see here, uh, we just look through this, which is the current array, look through the lead and get the value. And that's how stealing um, arrays um, and JSON hijacking used to work. This was found by Joe Walker back in 2007. Uh, it was also used by Jeremiah Grossman to exploit Gmail, uh, to steal G uh, Gmail contacts. And it's fixed in every browser. So, the fix is pretty simple. So here we've got an array, an array literal. This function will never be called now. Um, so you, this used to be called this. The array constructor used to be called, but it is, is completely disabled now. It's just ignored in JavaScript when you're using an array literal. Uh, so the next attack, which is pretty cool, um, the object pro attack setter attack. This worked by defining a setter on every single JavaScript object and give it a property, so in this case we're using user. So we want to steal the user property of every um, JavaScript object. We create a setter that um, loops through the object value being sent to the setter, and we can steal the data of it. So here we have an array literal with an object literal, uh, the user property, which has got our setter on there, setter is then passed the value of an array literal and then the name and value is alerted. Uh, this worked against Twitter. Um, I created a blog post a few years ago called I Know What Your Friends Did Last Summer. And basically it looped through your Twitter followers and alerted their location and what they've been doing that summer. So it's pretty cool. Um, this has also been fixed in every browser. Um, the fix is quite simple, so here our setter is never defined on the object in the array literal, so this will never be called. So you can't steal the data. So, um, the journey began with a simple question. James Kell, who I work with, 
asked a simple question, can you create a polyglot JS JPEG? I said, sure, I'll give that a go, that sounds like fun. In case you don't know, a polyglot is just something that executes in more than one language or format. So you can have a PDF, JPEG, JS, GIF, or whatever. So I started off looking into the JPEG. I use this brilliant resource by Ange Albertini. If you've not heard of Ange Albertini, then you need to check him out. Look on his website. He's got loads of uh, resources about dissecting uh, various formats and slides as well. So check out our Ange Albertini. There's a little plug for you. So the first thing that I noticed that I noticed about the JPEG format are these few bytes at the start. FF D8FFE0. Can anybody tell me what's significant about those bytes? They're actually a JavaScript variable, a valid JavaScript variable. So at the start of the start of the image marker is FFD8. The application header of the JPEG format is FFE0. And then we've got two bytes that we can control, which specify the length of the application header in, J in, in the JPEG. <coughs> so, guess which two bytes I chose? Anybody? No? 2F, 2A, which is, of course, a multi line JavaScript comment. So, the length of I'll show you on this uh, highlighted side here just a minute. So, we've got a valid JavaScript variable here. Then we have a JS comment, which also defines the length of the application header. So, then we've got the rest of the app header. Uh, look on uh, Andrew Albertini's diagram if you want to know more. And then we pad that out with nulls for the length of our value there. So it acts as a JavaScript comment, but also specifies the actual length of the JPEG head. So, then we use the JPEG comment. So the JPEG comment begins with FFFE, and then it has two bytes which represent the length of the comments. So in this case, it's 1C. And we inject inside our comment our payload, which says Burt Rocks, because of course it is. So, at the end of the image, we need to modify um, the image data itself. So we just go to the end of the image, modify the image data, and close our multi line JavaScript comment. So then we inject a single line comment after that to hide or disable the ending of the JPEG file, which of course would uh, result in a JavaScript error. So we close our multi-line comment and then start a new single line comment and that will um, disable the end of the JPEG file, which would raise a JavaScript error. So just like that. So we've got our our payload which closes a uh, multi-line comment, pay our payload executes, starts a new multi-line comment, and then at the end we close it and in inject a single line comment. So that should work, right? You think. So I injected an uploaded JPEG um, and we didn't get an alert. And I was using Firefox at the time with Firebug. And, well, if you can see, but it says syntax error illegal character. And you'll see that all the characters were very much mangled. So we didn't get our alert. I thought we need a character set. So give, give the file a character set. I went through the character sets. I think this is one of the default character sets. Um, I saw 8859-1 and we get our alert. So we can use uh, 
JPEGs to bypass CSP and you've got a policy that allows same origin scripts. So we can just pass it um, a JPEG and um, we'll get our alert. So, on to my next stage of the exploit. So I was, I was uh, decided to look into JavaScript proxies because I found them interesting. So what is a proxy? So it's nothing to do with HTTP proxies. Um, but what you're actually doing in JavaScript is man in the middle of the actual object. Um, so I think proxy is a good name for it. So we create a new proxy, we give it the object that we want to man in the middle, and we have a handler. A handler is just a, a JavaScript object, not an, an object, literal basically. And that has a list of traps. So a trap is the interception you want to uh, define. So say if you wanted to intercept a set operation, a get operation, uh, a function call for example, then you would define a trap. So it looks like this. So we've got our new proxy. We've got our, we've got our object that we want to uh, proxy. Then we've got our has trap here. Um, the function will be called, that returns the object, and that will return the, the value of the name, the actual undefined JavaScript variable. So a has trap intercepts the in operator in JavaScript. But as a side effect, it also intercepts undefined JavaScript variables. So this has trap is very interesting. Benjamin, now I'm going to try and pronounce his name. <laughs> Benjamin Dunk von der I think, I don't know, uh, found an interesting issue. He overwrote the protocol property, which basically um, edits the window prototype. And he used a JavaScript proxy to steal undefined JavaScript variables across the name. So that's pretty cool. So I've got a simple example here. So here, in JavaScript, you're always working with window. Um, so what you're actually doing here is window.proton, and then you're assigning that with a new proxy. And the object that we pass is just the window prototype again. We give it, we give, well, Benjamin, should I say, give it has trap. And alerted the undefined verb. So here, the has trap is being sent the undefined variable and we're alerting the result. So that was a pretty cool technique. So here, normally this would be a cross domain script, but for so, so they can easily understand, um, it's just a script with an undefined variable and we get the result. So that was a pretty cool technique. But Firefox fixed this vulnerability a few years ago. Yeah. But now, every major browser supports proxies. So of course, can we break those browsers? And there won't be a talk if I didn't, would there? So hacking Edge was too easy. Uh, it didn't take a lot of effort at all, really. So here we just uh, go proto proto, which we overwrite with a new proxy, pass the window prototype with a house trap, and we alert the result. So Edge just one more proto down the prototype chain and we hack it pretty easy. And just reference proto.proto is the object event target prototype, which is like the window prototype and it acts as the window prototype, but it's called object target prototype. <coughs> and with further research, I thought maybe Edge goes down a different code path and I found that set prototype off. Uh, so, overwrite 
the proto, the window prototype, with a new proxy. So basically we're doing the same thing, maybe a different code path. Give it a house trap, and we get our undefined room. That was cool. Didn't take much effort at all. Um, but then Chrome was a little more tricky. So with Chrome, I started off Proto dot Proto. Proto dot Proto dot Proto. And this value is null when you alert the value, but you can overwrite it. So I overwrite it with a new proxy. Gave it Proto, the window prototype, as an object. Then give it a house trap. So I'll target the first two objects, name is your undefined JavaScript variable. Well, this time, Chrome was doing something very interesting. What it was actually doing was converting undefined JavaScript variables to functions. So originally I tried to alert the name, the undefined variable, but Chrome was having none of that. But in the actual, so here I, I refer to the current function, the house trap function there, uh, get the caller, convert it to a string, and we get our undefined variable. And we've hacked Chrome, which is pretty cool. It took a lot of effort, but was worth it. And in case you're interested, the, the reason that I found that you can go proto, 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 or proto, or proto, is I've got a tool that basically enumerates objects. And I use that to enumerate the window prototype. Safari turned out to be quite as easy as Edge. So this time, my, on my first attempt, it was literally five seconds. I just removed the pro, one of the protos. So this time we've got proto.proto.proto.proto with a new proxy, past the window prototype, has trap. But interestingly, um, Safari didn't have the same behavior as Chrome. So we don't need caller, and we can just alert the undefined JavaScript variable. Cool. So Safari was hacked pretty easy. And um, it turned out that, in fact, you don't need proto.proto.proto.proto. You can just do the same as Edge, proto.proto, new proxy. So it turned out to be exactly the same as Edge. So then that got me thinking. In the back of my mind, I hacked the JPEG format, because it was a lot of fun, and found using the character set would execute my JavaScript payload. I thought, well, well, of course, we're here. I was, I've got a few different research projects, and proxies was one of them. And I thought maybe we could combine proxies and character sets. So I wanted to steal undefined variables. I wanted more. So maybe I could convert the entire JSON response to an undefined JavaScript variable and then use proxies to steal that data. So we're combining the proxy technique and the character set technique. So I fuzzed the character sets. So I have three separate files. Uh, you can't see that. It's just a doc type declaration. And just an empty JSON response and some XML data. So I loop through all the character sets that I found on the internet, outputted a script, gave it a character set, and each of the files, so that's the doctac one, then JSON, and then XML. So what I'm doing is just checking to see if those character sets will convert the output or the response to an undefined JavaScript variable. And I found a bunch of interesting character sets on Chrome. Uh, Chrome is very handy because the dev tool allows you to filter by keywords so you can extract pretty much all the character sets that convert um, to undefined JavaScript variables. 
and I found a bunch of character sets on IE as well. Um, I've not gone into depth in any of those. Um, I only stopped when either JSON, uh, XML, or um, a doc type was not being converted. So they might, you could steal data using any of these character sets, um, but I, I left, left I, oh, sorry. I um, stopped researching um, because I found a character set that was most interesting. And that was UTF 16B. B stands for the big Endian. Uh, so if we take our reference point in hex, so OX41 equals A, as we all know. And in UTF 16BE, it actually represents two separate bytes. So we've got a null byte and OX41. So two bytes represent those, those that character. And just for reference, uh, UTF 16LE uh, represents the same using the same bytes but in a different order. <coughs> so if two bytes form a character, that's pretty interesting. So when the two bytes are combined, maybe we can produce a JavaScript variable from those bytes. So you might have an ASCII value, but when it's being converted, it will be converted to a, a non-ASCII JavaScript variable. So if we take a reference point of uh, open curly double quote, so that's an open curly double quote, which is OX7B, OX22. What, uh, using the character set with UTF16BE does, is it combines those characters into one character, and in JavaScript, that's an undefined JavaScript variable, a non-ASCII JavaScript variable. And if we evaluate that, we will see in the output, 7B22 is not defined. Cool, that's some interesting behavior. So we've got our Chrome exploit. Photo, 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 photo. With a new proxy. With a house trap. So, because it's Chrome, we have to use the caller to steal the data. Then, we just do uh, a string replace on the actual uh, function name. So, well, the undefined JavaScript variable, but it is actually a function in Chrome. So, that's just a regex that matches globally. So, one character. Convert that character into the character call. And then, bit shift by eight bits and mask for the so the first that's the first byte that's the second byte and then we can decode that data so we can steal that data so let's let's give you a demo Okay, so first off, I'll show you uh, on Safari. Um, I can't use DevTools because overwriting the window prototype will break DevTools. So here um, we've got our Safari exploit. Proto dot proto dot proto new proxy. Decode the data. We have an external script which is our JSON response, just sample data, with uh, a character set. And the JSON response just looks like that. So let's open up Safari. And then we've stolen the data. Very cool. So I've got a VM, so x-domain.com x is just pointing to my local VM. So I've got um, a Chrome, a version of Chrome. <coughs> so here is using the Chrome exploit this time. 
five protos and then with the get the caller and then decode the data with an external script and we're using the same script as Safari. As Safari. Um, so this is Chromium uh, 53. So it was patched in 54. And uh, we steal the data. So uh, you'll notice in Chrome um, it says function. So this would be So this this would be uh, our non ASCII JavaScript version, but I've decoded it. <coughs> and you'll see the alert happens more than once. And also affects dev tools too. So you might, be, you might be wondering where the Firefox bug is. I've tried very hard to exploit Firefox. Well, they've got some good guys working for them. Um, it, it seems to me that Jesse Rudiman, I don't know him personally, but I know of his work, uh, he seemed to have eliminated all the proxy bugs. So well done him. Slow clap. <laughs> <laughs> so then, because Chrome has been patched. Um, I thought, how, how about stealing data without using proxies? So Google patched the Chrome. So the, the key to this was, if you can control some of the JSON response, then maybe you could manipulate the JSON response to execute scripts that would steal the data before and after. So, I injected a UTF 16B encoded script. So, this time, what's interesting here is that I'm actually using the character set. So, I'm not converting this to an undefined JavaScript variable. I'm actually prepending each character with a null so that it actually executes this code as is. So, what, what's happening here? Before the equal sign is our data that we want to steal. We assign, we assign that to 1337. We loop through the window, checking for that value, and then the variable name will be the, the data that we want to steal that occurs before the script has been injected. So basically, this script here is just prepended with nulls so that we get the actual script data. So that enables us to steal the data before. So then, got me thinking, how can you steal the data after? I can't escape quotes, because you might be in a JSON encoded script. So how can I steal the data after? So here, I create a set timeout. So the whole script again is UTF 16B encoded. So every character's got a null before it, for example. Uh, then I use a set timeout, uh, give it a function, loop through the window, check to see if the value is now. Now this is significant, I'll tell you why in a second. And uh, check that value is now and the type of that value is actually a number, because in JavaScript, not a number is actually a number type. Um, and so, I wrap it in a try and catch two, because on IE, when you're looping through the window, external will raise an exception, so I just have a try and catch. So how can we convert our, our data that is injected after how can we convert that into a nap? Easy. All we do is increment a property on window and our data that we want to steal that occurs after will be converted into a non-ASCII JavaScript variable. Just here. So we can steal that data. So here's a simple test script. We've got some data before that we want to steal. 
we've got some data after that we want to steal. So this is a, just a PHP function, uh, multi-byte convert encoding, which has a UTF-16B character set. So that's all treated as actual scripts, not an undefined variable, and we can steal the bit. You might think that this could also apply to CSS. And after extensive testing, um, I found that it wasn't possible. So browsers, what they do, when it encounters a doc type, it stops parsing the CSS. So you might think you could inject a script that points to a HTML page or a JSON page and with the character set and then uh, execute it as CSS and use uh, get the properties from the CSS file and steal the data. But no, it's not possible. Um, so most browsers check the mime type and prevent that attack, which is good. Um, I suppose. Uh, in my test, Chrome said that the style sheet was interpreted uh, correctly, but in my test it didn't seem that way, unfortunately. I also checked other character sets um, and I saw 10646 UCS2. Sorry, I can't have the same screen. <laughs> um, that was being converted, so I could import XML data on Chrome, um, but in the later versions of Chrome, this no longer works. Uh, I found it more brittle than UTF 16BE. You could, you could only import a very limited amount of data. So you could steal <coughs> XML data as a JavaScript variable using that process. So, I thought maybe we can use UTF-16BE to bypass CSP. So, if the HTML structure before your injection once combined in UTF-16BE is a valid JavaScript variable, then you can con convert the entire HTML response into an undefined variable and <coughs> execute your payload. And anything after doesn't matter because we can inject a single line comment and hide that data, or not execute that data. So here, we've got a simple CSP policy that only allows script to self. I'll turn off the um, XSS folder. And here, this structure here will be an undefined JavaScript variable. Um, that just outputs x value of the set. So this is the most important part. After does not matter. <coughs> so for our vector to work, we inject a script. We point that script. You can't. Can you see that? Uh, yeah. We point the script to same origin. So it's pointing to the site we want to inject into. Then we again UTF-16 being called payload so that this is treated as that value so equals alert one and then single line comment. And here you can see the nulls so it's double URL encoded but there you can see the nulls of so that the data is treated as UTF-16 be and not converted into any kind of and of course we need our character set. Good. So I've got a short demo and this demo is cool because you can see what's ha actually happening to the data. I'm just getting a vector. So in this case we're not uh, manipulating the window prototype so dev tools should work and then we get our alert so here if I inspect the HTML document here you can see we've injected the script with the UTF-16B character set and 
the script is pointing to the same origin, but it has uh, nulls so that it's uh, treated as is. So when I click on here, you can see what's actually happening. So this is act this is actually HTML that's being converted, and because I've injected nulls, the alert one is treated as is, and then the rest is common to that. I think this is pretty fascinating because for all the non technical ones, I'm just going to say that somebody that should never seen before all the browser security, everything we know about security has been fundamentally broken using the strict studies, which basically brings me to my question, because obviously guys only been showing us a little alert boxes, but obviously malware writers and attackers can use it to abuse the fact that browsers are no longer secure and start abusing cross-site scripting and steal our cookies, steal our identities, and uh, to perform all sorts of attacks. So obviously you mentioned that uh, Chrome has fixed it. Yeah. Right. Yep. So uh, uh, can can you just list some some of the risks what may happen and obviously how the browsers are approaching to fix this issue? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Chrome has patched this issue. They fixed it within. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Chrome patched it within seven days. I. Um, reported it to every single browser vendor. Microsoft uh, man in the middle of me with a project manager. Um, they, uh, after a few emails back and forth, they accepted it was an issue and they're going to patch it. Um, Chrome fixed it within seven days and Apple didn't even reply. So, so that means that Safari and Edge are still vulnerable? Yes. Okay, so don't, don't use that, <laughs> those browsers, guys. So you might think um, CSP, um, that Google would know how to secure CSP. They released um, a tool that you might have heard of, uh, which is called the CSP Evaluator. And what it does is um, it evaluates your CSP policy and tells you if it is secure or not. So here I've got a simple CSP policy that allows no scripts, no objects, but allows frames with a data protocol. So Google says, hunky dory, that's all okay. No, it's not. So Google says that uh, data URLs are fine. And I think this is because on every other browser they are fine, but on Edge it is not safe to use that in your CSP policy. So even Google gets CSP uh, policies wrong. So you might want to see me bypass that. Um, in this case, we inject an iframe. We point it to a data URL with an embedded iframe in that, and that points to a JavaScript URL, and that actually um, has access to per document. So we can steal cookies on that domain or whatever. Um, so Google really needs to change the evaluator um, to <coughs> say that data's, data protocols are not allowed for iframes or Edge needs to patch it, whichever one. Um, yeah. So you might want to do some further research into what I've shown you today. Um, you can attack uh, Safari dev tools using this, so uh, proto.proto with new proxy. This time we have a get trap, so it's called pro from every getter um, on the window prototype. Um, and you can see here, you can get the caller of the function, loop through and get every caller of that function. And when you see the pop-up, you'll see that it's dev tools code that you're actually accessing. So that's worth playing with. Um, you could probably break dev tools um, um, messing with the prototype like that. Um, so you might think that um, you can 
bring back the old JSON exploits, uh, calling setters on object literals. I tried extensively to do that, um, but it's, work, it's another area of research. I didn't have um, a large amount of time to spend trying to break all this, but that is uh, something to look at. Maybe you could do, do um, some further research there. Um, and Safari, interestingly, allows you to overwrite the object prototype with a proxy. No other browser allows you to do this. And when you do this, Safari goes mental, basically. It uh, doesn't um, respond very well. So that's another area of research that we can look into. So mitigations. It is quite simple. You declare a character set when outputting JSON data or even any other data. Declaring the character set will disable these character set attacks. I found, originally when I did the research uh, on a Ubuntu 14 VM, um, it wasn't patched, but later versions of PHP, what, what seems to happen, I haven't confirmed it with them, but what seems to happen is the output of uh, PHP scripts are actually sent the UTF-8 character set, which disables these attacks. So that's pretty cool. On newer versions of PHP, I think it's 5.6 maybe, or five, later versions of 5.5 fix this issue. So to sum up, proxies can leak data, and it's pretty cool. Uh, and UTF-16B character sets can also steal data too, even without proxies. And of course, CSP can be bypassed, and even Google gets it wrong sometimes. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Gareth. Um, so, for the first attack you've done with the uh, JPEG. Um, one of the things that you did with the CSP bypass, yeah. um, it, it assumes that the uh, source frames, sorry, source scripts are turned off, but what about images? So if you have a restriction on images as well, if there's a directive on source images, would that have any, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter given the other attacks that you showed later on, but for that specific one, would... Um, more stricter um, uh, directives on the images would have helped or not? So what I recommend is uh, any uploaded images are on a separate domain that yeah. is not allowed um, scripts uh, from that domain. So even if you upload an image and it's vulnerable, it allows you to inject JavaScript, then it will have no effect on your CSP policy because you will not whitelist that domain. That would solve the problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so just coming back to the last point on the images, right? Yeah. Again, for the non-technical <coughs> people in the audience, many websites have ability to upload images, let's say pictures, to your profile on some website, okay? And they are specifically configured to only allow image types, let's say JPEG, okay? And they think it's an absolutely innocent image. And obviously, with this exploit that Gareth just showed us, that means any website which allows you to upload an image is instantly vulnerable because they can instantly be hacked using this. No, technique. not every website. Um, so, well, as not only you have CSP, that or as mitigation. Yes, but you could actually parse the JPEG format and prevent uh, it from actually containing JavaScript. So, if you rewrite the application heading in the JPEG, then you could prevent this attack from happening. And I've seen that on a couple of sites. Uh, Google do that as well. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's take Talking a bit about how you came.